And we'll talk to you today about the collective intelligence. We are both working with tech and work closely with people. So what we mean by collective intelligence is really where we try and solve complex challenges, bringing different people, diverse people, working together on a problem. Uh, and we'll give you quite a few examples today uh, about different perspectives of what we mean by uh, collective intelligence. So that's us. As you can see, three of us will get three different perspectives and examples uh, of what we want to share today. Uh, so my name is Petya, uh, yeah, Open Tech Collective Facilitator. I'm going to be by Simon, who's our Open Innovation Facilitator, and Mira. And all of us are also based in different locations and uh, bringing yeah, different backgrounds and perspectives actually to this topic today. So what we do, I hope that maybe you have heard already about the Humanitarian Open Street Map team or you have joined some of our sessions. The organization started 30 years ago in response to uh, the earthquake in Haiti. So there was a specific need identified in uh, mapping areas so that humanitarian respondents can reach and that's where also technology was needed. You'll hear more about that. We are an international team uh, dedicated to humanitarian action and community development through open mapping. So the community side is another really important element of collaboration when we talk about the collective power of people uh, joining in together. What our mission is, uh, is we want to ensure that uh, local community source map data is accessible and utilized when decisions are made. So what we mean by local is we really work uh, very closely with communities in the regions that we are uh, focused on um, and are very much involved not only in adding, you know, adding the data to the map, but also uh, we talk about the technologies that we that we developed. Um, and what I mean by local, so we are a team um, and we focus in four priority regions that you can see. Uh, on the map, so we have the open mapping of Asia Pacific and Europe and Jan yesterday presented a uh, specific other response to the earthquake in Turkey. We also have a hub in Eastern and South Africa, uh, Western and Northern Africa, and more recently in Latin America uh, and Caribbean. So in those, uh, in those four regions, uh, we have 94 priority countries, so it's quite a high number of countries, but what's really important is uh, we have around 100 staff working on the humanitarian open street map, based in over 37 different countries, but we very closely work with different communities on the ground in those countries. So all the different mapping efforts and collaboration, and what we talk about the collective power, is really done in collaboration with uh, different partners and communities in those regions and the countries that we focus on. Uh, as you can see from the previous slide, we are working in so many areas of the world uh, and some of the challenges that we are working towards, uh, uh, creating an impact, uh, achieving an impact, really spreads across, you know, from environmental disasters to um, uh, disaster response, to gender, public health. These are really complex social, environmental, uh, and sometimes even political issues. So when we speak about collective intelligence, why, 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 do, why talk about this? It's a buzzword, we know that. Uh, but have you ever thought about how, how are we able to beat the world's best chess player uh, through technology so easily? Uh, but we're still struggling tw almost 30 years later uh, to really figure out how to uh, ensure that our livelihood, our nature is taken care of. This is because these are complex problems. There is no uh, one size fits all. Um, and this, I think, is where uh, collective intelligence, this taps also into systems thinking, um, applying uh, human-centered design. All of these, I think, are interlinked. Uh, and this is what uh, we're going to speak about today and give some examples. So just very briefly, collective intelligence through history. Um, we saw, uh, you know, in the early 90s, uh, Oxford, Dic Oxford Dictionary um, becoming, uh, you know, the go-to dictionary today. And this was very much because of um, uh, not only linguists, but also people from around the world uh, sending in uh, their words, sending in etymology, sending in their, and always building on, building on um, each other's knowledge. All the way up to um, all the way up to you know participatory 
uh, discussions around how public funds are spent um, back in the uh, uh, early 20th century. In the digital age, this is just expanding by the minutes. And I think, uh, so this uh, picture is not from OpenStreetMap, but I think OpenStreetMap is a very good example of that. You have people from around the world who are always, you know, enhancing each other's, um, using each other's, uh, using their own knowledge to put in uh, valid local information to the map, making sure that the, the information that we have on the map is actually uh, contextually relevant and, and useful. Um, and just very quickly, we won't, won't go through this, but just to say one of the frameworks around collective intelligence is really tapping into different networks and there are links between here. I didn't, we didn't even put in uh, lines here because it's all connected. Um, there's at the, um, the network of ethics, uh, you have, can't see it here, but uh, networks of uh, consisting of technologists, including many of us here. Um, you have a power network, uh, not only in terms of uh, finance, but also uh, and economics, but also in terms of uh, definition power. Um, obviously, social, socially, how we are, uh, how we are. Um, combining our, how we are connecting as people, how our worldviews, uh, all of this uh, is really integrated. For us <laughs> today, I think it really, uh, it narrows down to three things. People, <laughs> people first, always people first, whatever, whether, you know, we're from the, some of us are from the tech team. Also, uh, first value is people first. And when we say people, it's not only what are their problems when solving uh, a problem, solving people's problem. It's also, what are their passions? What, what type of knowledge do they have? What sort of experience do they have? Uh, what is their um, culture? Um, and what we see in our community, and I think this is where also HOT stands out uh, a little bit, is that we're all, uh, not only HOT, but the whole community, um, we really have that fuel for creativity in the diversity of the people. Um, and then there's, of course, the tech part and also the information, the data. Um, and we will just, I'll just end by saying this before going into some concrete examples. Uh, collective intelligence, I think the best definition at least um, uh, for me is greater than the sum of the parts. If you're able to combine all this and if you're able to take into account, um, even as a technologist, I think you have a much greater um, point of departure to uh, to solve a problem creatively also, which is part of the, uh, our work. All right, we'll go into three examples uh, just to show you specifically how we, uh, how we approach uh, the collective intelligence. I'll give the mic back now to... <laughs> All right, how many of you have used the hot tasking manager or have heard of it? Yes, we have a <laughs> raise of hands. Wonderful. So I use that as an example. So that's, exa that's exactly a, a tool that started with a specific uh, people need, you know, focusing on the users. Uh, in, uh, and that's how HOT also was a key flagship product that started uh, very much with the creation of the humanitarian open street map team, which is a tool for coordination of volunteers. So getting people together so that they can map and create that uh, collective effort um, together. It's widely used, so as you can see, you know, a raise of you know different hands. It was really nice to see in different sessions actually um, earlier on, uh, seeing people mentioning the uh, hot tasking manager. So what we have done, and what our vision of what Sine talked about uh, when we talk about collective efforts is uh, two years ago, probably, in the maintenance and development, so thinking about the technology and improving it and maintaining it, uh, we work very closely with a team uh, in Nepal called Kathmandu Living Labs. So um, we jointly collaborate on the maintenance of the two and uh, mainly them bringing ideas. So it's not, uh, you know, you have a tech team and, um, building and developing the uh, hot tasking manager. So that's something that we've been doing now for yeah, nearly two, over two years um, in a collective effort of improving and not just maintaining, but also um, having that closer connection as well um, with the users. 
And I'll give you a few um, examples. I'll, I'll keep that slide in here. Uh, we also started uh, more regular meetups, which is really an opportunity for um, users. And it's something that um, a lot of people uh, say, oh, I'm not technical, you know, I'd, I, I wouldn't join this meetups. But it's something that's really been very helpful to have different users of the tool. So you have mappers, validators, or contributors who are already uh, getting involved and sharing their feedback on, uh, on any improvements or suggestions more directly, and also connecting them um, actually with the developers. I think often we hear that the developer is just working on the back of the development of the tool, and they actually don't really hear from uh, the people using the tool. And that has been quite a big uh, motivation, but also you know, creating different ideas and ways in which, um, in way, in ways in which um, the tasking manager is being developed um, and improved. Uh, and we have yeah, really nice feedback from uh, people joining those kind of virtual sessions at the moment. I know there are some more locally um, organized. Um, I think in Nepal was one example for that. Uh, but yeah, if you're interested uh, in uh, joining, whether you are you know, an open source contributor, developer, or somebody who is using the tool um, and want to share that feedback, that's, um, that's an opportunity to join. OK, so uh, I'll talk about uh, another uh, project that we worked on uh, to, to show the power of uh, collective intelligence. So this one uh, is uh, titled like Engaging Social Enterprise and Impact Communities. So one challenge that uh, we have, so uh, if, if you guys attended like uh, yesterday's Turkey Syria activation presentation, uh, especially with, with uh, disaster activation, uh, it's always good to you know, map, have map data before the disaster. But, but the issue there is, you know, like how do we engage people because uh, there needs you know, some kind of motivation for them to like go out and map. And uh, having this, okay, there will be a disaster sometimes in the future is not uh, a very good motivation. And, and they need like some users of that data. So, so we have been trying to like, you know, create uh, data users for OpenStreetMap data. And then we are working with uh, different social enterprises uh, in the region. So right now we are working with uh, four social enterprises in India and uh, one in Bangladesh uh, doing various work. I'm going to focus on one of those social enterprises. Uh, it's called uh, Hasura Aqua. So, uh, so this project, like Hasura Aqua, is a Bangalore-based startup. Uh, and what they do is they work with farmers. So the farmers in, uh, in Karnataka, the Karnataka state of India, they get subsidies from the government. So if they want to build a pond, uh, so you can see the pond. So if they want to build something similar, they get 90% subsidy from the government. And, uh, and after building this pond, like a lot of farmers uh, built this pond. And after building this pond, they realized, OK, we can use this pond for inland fish farming. So, so then they started you know, fish farming. But due to them not being traditional fish farmers, uh, their yield was not that good. And uh, then entered this uh, group of young people who were studying agriculture and aquaculture. And they, they found a startup uh, where they work with these farmers to help them, you know, uh, increase their yield. So they started providing them with uh, like high quality fizzlings, high quality feeds, and there is this uh, IoT sensor that they made, like you know, a small boat uh, that uh, monitors the water quality, and if needed, they treated the water as well. But for them, you know, like one issue was. Uh, uh, they wanted to scale. They were working with seven farmers, and they were successful in increasing like the productivity of farmers by 40 percent. But they wanted to scale, and and that was very difficult for them to scale because uh, they needed to figure out where the ponds were. And the the CEO of uh, Chris uh, Hasura Aqua, like he went to Google Earth, and he you know searched around in the satellite imagery. And, and you know, mark those, and in one week, he said like he was able to find around 40 ponds, and, and that was not very scalable for them because they wanted to reach out to more and more farmers. So we, we told like, uh, we can help you with this. And we set up like 
mapping campaigns. So in Tasking Manager, there's another uh, tool called Map Swipe. So using that, we set up mapping uh, campaign and over the uh, span of two and a half uh, months, we engaged 